Maverick Traders. Welcome out to your currency midweek for August 10th. Corey here with you as usual for these midweeks, and it's just nice to be with you. Nice to see all of you here uh, in in person, and then, of course, many of you will listen in to the recording. As always, a quick reminder to make sure that you follow your trading plan, and let's talk markets. So this week, it's kind of been an interesting week. The CPI was really going to dictate risk and reward, whether we kind of moved more risk on, risk off and such. Uh, it was certainly going to dictate the direction of the U.S. dollar and, and so forth. But this market, if we look at stocks, the, the continuation to the upside is pretty impressive. Market uh, continues to push higher. I felt strongly that this correction was coming but you just never quite know. I mean, I couldn't predict the magnitude of it, how long it would last, those sorts of aspects. So uh, it was good to be bullish. You know, now are we reaching kind of the end point of that? Yeah, I mean, I think last week we kind of talked about that I felt like it was in the eighth or ninth inning of the rally and that we were going to be in more of a consolidative, kind of choppy, sideways market. Well, it must have been the eighth inning because we've gone just a little bit higher today. Actually, from last week, we were perfectly sideways. We hadn't really done anything from last week to this week until this morning. This morning, we kind of broke higher. And so, you know, is this the final kind of punctuation mark, that exclamation point that finishes off this stock market rally? I think there's a good possibility of that. We've talked about inflation, that it's kind of peaking um, and that it's starting to back off. Uh, that was in all of the data. So we didn't need the CPI to, to really tell us that too much, but we didn't know exactly what the numbers would be. Now, I would say that even though inflation, if you look down here at the bottom, CPI came in at zero versus 0.2 and the core CPI at 0.3 versus 0.5 expectations, you know, while that is slowing, you think about an inflation rate that's coming down from nine and they're super excited that it's 0.2 better. You know, it's not, I mean, it's it's definitely coming down and, and better that inflation is backing up, no question. But I would not take that and go, because this number came in 0.2 for the month, better than expected, that that means that oh, the Fed's going to back off and we're not going to raise rates. I wouldn't take some, I wouldn't extrapolate that out to some extreme, right? The US dollar, we talked about that it put in an important top. I mean, when it got to parity versus the euro, that was the end of its move. And now it's really starting to break down. And, and frankly, I think that makes sense. I think it should go lower for the coming weeks ahead. Uh, no problem there. I've felt like the Japanese yen should be a stronger currency, and it's doing that today, but it really hadn't started to act. In fact, I even got stopped out um, of a position trying to play that last week. So it hasn't, you know, I think, I wonder if today's the day, but I was trying to to basically short things against the yen, and now it's starting to work today. So I don't have a position yet, but I'm, I'm ready to get into that. Um, O for one on that thesis, but ready to, to put more uh, opportunities behind that because I think that's the next opportunity the way I see it. Commodities have been a bit of a roller coaster. Uh, energy prices a little bit stronger than most where lumber's down 50% and all these commodities are down significantly. It oils back to 90 a barrel, but that's still pretty high. I mean, nat gas hitting new multi-year, multi-decade highs. So that's kind of the stubborn area of the market in terms of commodities and their ability to stay up. So let's look at weekly performance. Almost all of the return in markets came today, right? The rally in the S&P, international markets, uh, crypto and so forth, having a good day, which if you look at the consolidation, you can see we've done nothing, 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 nothing. And then today we jumped up. As we take a little closer look at it, this is kind of their symmetry in this price action where this consolidative phase here, see how we consolidated for maybe eight to 10 days or so. That consolidation period, when we got back up to it, it had a very, very similar type of consolidation, very similar at the exact same price levels in the S&P. 
This one's trying to break out on the top side. Here we broke on the bottom side of that base, right? So we based and then we broke down. Here we're basing, we're trying to break out. My thought, first of all, it's not going to have this type of energy. Secondly, I think it is a more of a false move than something that can be traded for an extended period of time. Meaning, sure, it can go for a couple more days. You know, can it have a little bit more in it? Absolutely. But I don't expect some, you know, recovery that's just off to the races. That's not what I'm envisioning. I would anticipate that this kind of is more of a little false move and that we get some consolidations and such. Now, I don't think that there's a ton of downside either. Like, I don't, I don't expect, I think a good trade would be if the market did slide for a few days sharply to buy that dip. I think it's more back and forth that we're entering more of a quiet period. As we look at currencies, I mean, the big news is U.S. dollar down a lot. The Kiwi um, having a much, much better day. As we look at crypto, all of them higher across the board. Ethereum, clearly the outperformer. But again, all of this performance seems to come from today's price action. If we come into the calendar, we can, we can use that. This was really the big event, the CPI today. And we get some PPI, producer price index, tomorrow. You get some consumer sentiment on Friday, and then you get some GDP out of the UK. But as far as the rest of this week, this was the big hurdle. This was the thing. Today's price action was certainly the thing that everyone was kind of watching closely. So as we look at other international markets, I mean, again, I just don't think it's, it's going to run away from you. I think that this area is kind of a stalling out area. International markets had a similar consolidation back here. Notice this consolidative phase was at lower levels. So it kind of speaks to international stocks underperforming U.S. stocks. Is this breakout one that takes us sharply higher? Let me say this. By contrast and comparison for equity investors, I would much rather be in this world stock index than the S&P 500. I do think that this will outperform. Part of that is U.S. dollar. The U.S. dollar strength is a headwind to these corporations, many of which the exchange works against their profitability. The U.S. dollar is topped out and is starting to break down. I think that should flip-flop. I think that should be a, a tailwind for international stocks. So I do expect international stocks to outperform U.S. stocks in the coming weeks and, and next couple of months. But do I expect them to just be off to the race? Again, I don't think that's the environment. I don't think you're going to get really hurt uh, too much on the downside either. I think for a, a while now, we're going to be consolidative. If we look at crypto, we remain stuck in this range. Crypto is just, you know, this could be a, a calm before the storm. It could be kind of a quiet period, but for the most part, they, they were left for dead. They bounced back a bit. And now it's just a quiet, consolidative, not much happening there across the board. If there's one cryptocurrency that is performing and that you could consider trading, it's more of the Ethereum. Ethereum is uh, holding out better than most. So let's take a look at a couple of things here. You know, in terms of markets, we always want to pay attention to happenings in various currencies and crypto and such. I'm going to start with those yen pairs because I really think that's the opportunity. Now, we had a little bit of a fake out. You know, take something like pound yen. And let me even zoom in a bit. Let's, let's take a little closer look. So here's where I attempted the, the trade in terms of shorting something against the yen. We had bounced. We talked about this last week, that we had had bearish patterns in most of these. And here you can see a reversal. And it was a whipsaw. You started to move down, and then it whipsawed right back up for the stop out. Here again, we get another setup. Okay, This one looks very similar to the last one. Um, you can have 
you know, post-traumatic stress, I guess, where you got stopped out previously and you just say, well, I'm not going to screw with this one. Maybe it's just choppy. I, I get that. You know, I, I kind of live by that motto that I want to do more of what is working and less of what's not. If something's not working, I want to push the brakes and say, hold on a second. Let's not Let's not do more of this. Let's get out of risk. Let's get out of things that aren't working. But in this case, I still trust it. I think that this is the beginning of a bigger move lower in other currencies versus the Japanese yen. In other words, I think the yen is is strong in the coming weeks ahead. It's already started. In my mind, I mean, you can see the rollover in the moving averages. The risk is that it just stays choppy. And that's not out of the question, by the way. The risk is that it stays choppy. The reward is that we are, in fact, going to see these charts break down. And I think that reward justifies that risk. So th this is the daily chart. Um, this is pound yen. Now, as we talked about, the pound has a GDP report. So that's something to be aware of. Um, as we look at this versus some others, so I saw a question about Swiss franc yen. Okay, Swiss franc versus the yen. Um, it So here again, that this wouldn't be at the top of my list normally on the daily chart, but if you come into shorter time frames, you know, you go to a four hour chart or you go to a one hour chart or something, you can see some reversals. But I think this is still... My opinion would be that this is not the pairing that I would would want because it's stronger, basically. Um, because it basically, like if I look at the daily chart, this thing's still above those moving averages. If I come into a four-hour chart, hey, it's still above these moving averages, which are sloping upward. So I don't think that this would be the one, but I, along those same lines, you know, I highlighted pound yen, but what about U.S. dollar yen? Do U.S. dollar yen looks perfect. I mean, daily chart failed underneath the moving averages, pivoting to the downside. If we were to look at this on a four-hour chart, again, you're going to have that downward trend, the breaking of moving averages. doesn't mean you have to short it right this moment. You'll probably get some sort of bounce, but I think that's a shorting opportunity. So, you can play, you know, you pick your spots. I don't like Swiss franc on the short side because it's one of the better currencies or has been one of the better currencies. Um, I would rather, you know, if, if do anything with the Swiss franc, buy it. You know, maybe a short U.S. dollar against the Swiss franc type of idea. You know, so if we go to U.S. dollar versus Swiss franc, now you've got a, a tradable uh, setup. I think where you can, you know, you're you're trading weakness by betting on the U.S. dollar going down, and that's playing out. And the Swiss franc has had more strength. Going back to yen pairs, the other favorites. I mean, Kiwi has been a, a candidate. Australian dollar has been a candidate versus it, and Canadian dollar has been a candidate versus the yen because of their you know, risky, they're more in the risk category, right? So it makes sense to kind of say, okay, well, do we want to take a, a classic risk on currency and bet on it going down versus more of a risk off currency like the yen, which we're betting on going up? Out of all of those, I have to say that the CAD is the cleanest chart. So on the daily, you really kind of rebounded up to the moving average and failed. Whereas some of those others went above it. So they had a little too much strength, a little bit of kind of a, a questionable, hey, are these too strong to get short type of idea uh, where they went back above the moving averages. This one reacted, resisted, rolling over. Again, I think you can come into the shorter time frames to trade it. And we're breaking and closing below the moving averages, all the characteristics and things that you'd want to see. So um, for me, the ones that stood out to me for a tradable opportunity the most this week are pound yen, cad yen, 
and U.S. dollar yen, not necessarily in that order, by the way, all of those pairs would be short ideas. You'd be shorting any of those three. That will get you long the Japanese yen. And that, I think, is the trade that I'm going to continue to, to attempt. Now, as always, the market will grade your work, right? If we're choppy, which, again, isn't out of the question, we'll come back next week, and I'd probably have given up on the yen. If it can't, if it doesn't, trade lower in the coming days i'm not so sure it's going to i mean this is kind of the period where it should work where things are set up where you've got the characteristics of you know international markets starting to raise rates starting to be a little bit more aggressive you have the u.s dollar coming off a bit with the inflation data backing up i mean this is this is ripe for the yen to trade higher and for these pairs to be a good shorting opportunity. So if it doesn't happen here, I'm not sure when it does. Yeah, I'm I'm looking at this as, you know, something that is not really long in the tooth. I mean, if you think about it, this is what we would call a brand new downtrend. Brand new trend um, that's just starting to materialize. And one way you can kind of think about that is, well, there's a couple of characteristics that signal this is brand new. What are they? Well, you've just traded below the 50-day period moving average and sustaining below that. That's the first time in months. See that? Right? So we're in a new downtrend by that account. The 20 is probably going to cross the 50 here in the next couple of days. That's a brand new downtrend signal. And you also have just now made lower lows and kind of the lower high dynamic, right? So in an uptrend, what happens is higher highs and higher lows. They call these swings or pivots and you make higher highs, higher lows, higher highs. In a sideways range, what happens? Well, it's not always perfectly clean, but it's basically relatively equal highs and equal lows, right? You're just not making any progress. You're not trending up. You're not trending down. It's just back and forth. In fact, that's kind of what I would expect out of equities here for a while. In a downtrend, what happens is, and it's the, it's this first break that's kind of the start of things. That first lower low is your big signal. You know, put a star next to that one because that's the starting point. That is where you're at the starting gate. Just like back here, you know, let's imagine that this was a consolidation or something back here where you had relatively equal highs and lows or whatever, this would be the starting point. This is the brand new uptrend. And by the way, this would be where those moving averages would just start to cross upward and so forth, right? And you'd have maybe some bullish cross in the moving averages and then they would run upward or whatever, then they'd probably get mixed up in here and going sideways, and then they'd start to turn down over here or what have you. So that is what we would say is the start of a new uptrend, right? This is the first higher high, the real breakout point. This is the first lower low or the real kind of breakdown point, and that's what this was. This was your first lower low. We broke down. We've started making lower lows. We broke the 50 period moving average. The moving averages, look at the 20 starting to kind of roll over and slope downward, etc. Right? This is the starting point. So that rally up, that I mean that should be, technically speaking, a good opportunity. You know, theor theoretically, right? That's that's the type of position though that we want to put ourselves in as traders is we want to put ourselves in a situation where I get that it's not going to work every time but if this works half the time it's going to be fantastic because the reward is bigger than the risk and so forth and that's definitely the case when you're getting in new new stages of trends um Kiwi versus the U.S. dollar. So let's take a look at it. 
Kiwi's been a, a stronger currency, and, and wow, I mean, if it finished like this, this is called a Marabozu candle, if you've ever heard of that. A Marabozu is basically a candlestick that has no wicks, and it has no shadows. See how you basically started at the low and you're finishing on the high? It Now, it may not do that, but that's what a Marabozu is, is it just doesn't have these wicks. It's, it's kind of a wickless candle. But you can see it's exploding, definitely explosive um, to the upside. And again, kind of the breakout, kind of the trend change, those types of points of, of control here. Here's the 20, here's the 50, you're breaking out above that. It is hard to chase something that's up already 130 pips on the day or whatever it is. I mean, that's that's hard to chase. I get it. It's up 2%. That's hard to chase up there because it's made a gigantic move. But the move is real, and it speaks to two things. It speaks to, I mean, there's really two elements. You probably have 1% of the upside because the yen is so strong, and then you have the other percent because the U.S. dollar is so weak. And this is definitely, most definitely, the strongest pairing today, meaning, um, well, it, I guess it is kind of close between that and the yen, uh, because the yen is super strong as well, and the USD is super weak, and that's moved 2% today. Um, so these are your two best, your two strongest currencies, and then US dollar is the weakest. So you can see that in that chart. Now, if you were trading it, again, I think you'd probably come into a shorter time frame and kind of say, okay, if I missed this, if I didn't get in on some form of breakout or whatever, I probably have to build my next expectation. You know, do we get a little pullback opportunity to buy? Do we high base? I probably have to wait on it at this point. But nice. Nice call there, certainly a, a good trading opportunity um, if you can catch that, if you were in it, if you were kind of positioned for it. Um, yeah, you could use Fibonacci. You could, you know, look for retracements and that sort of thing. So kind of say, okay, it's gone up, but let's see if I can get it a 38.2% retracement or some sort of level that way. Makes perfect sense. And the more you come into a shorter time frame, maybe the more quickly you can take an action. You know, maybe this pulls back for a couple of hours and you can find a setup or a risk to reward. But it, it is hard to chase it. I mean, in currency land, a 2% move is gigantic. And, and that speaks to, I mean, this CPI, this was one that was heavily anticipated. It was one that was going to move the U.S. dollar, no doubt, but going to move markets in, in general. I do think, you know, I will say this, um, I'm not sure that this is the game changer that everybody wants it to be. Let me say that. I think there was a kind of a, a sigh of relief that, okay, the good news is, is that at least we know that inflation has peaked, you know, that these numbers are coming down. And that's probably where the the sigh of relief most comes from. But let me say that I don't think this is the game changer in that the Fed's just going to completely flip a 180 or something. They still have more work to do. And inflation at 8%, 7%, 6% is way too high. And some of the genies out of the bottle, I mean, things like rent, you know, housing rent is a big part of CPI calculation. And Man, I don't think rents are coming down dramatically. That's that's something where, you know, rents kind of go up and they might stall out, but they don't go down dramatically in all likelihood. So I think we're going to be dealing with, for the next while, just some higher inflation numbers, you know, much higher than the Fed wants. And so that's a story for another day. But I would tend to fade this reaction a little bit in terms of, equities like equities rebounding a lot that one makes the least amount of sense to me because equities being up two percent kind of acting like the fed is gonna 
reverse and flip a 180. I don't think that's the case. So I, I like this as being kind of a punctuation mark and, and finishing move for equities specifically. But I think U.S. dollar has, has reversed and that should persist for a while. So let's come over here and look at our schedule for the rest of this week. So yesterday we sent out the CPI report, the trading preview, uh, kind of preparatory for today's uh, big event in the CPI. Then we'll have the currency recording, of course, coming out over this weekend. Um, for the coming weeks ahead, of course, we're, we're always packed with content. We'll have classes. We'll have market roundups where we send out, you know, daily reviews of what's transpired in the currency market. So plenty of information and education there coming out. Thanks, everyone, for being here. Have a great rest of your week, and we will see you next time. Goodbye.